What's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of FortuneBuilders.tv and uh, we're on site again today for a pretty cool little show. So here's the deal, we just bought this rehab and what I wanted to do after cleaning it out is I wanted to show everyone a little bit about foundations. So we're going to talk a little bit about slab on grade foundations. I've done some shows in the past on like um, raised foundations and post and pier type foundations and, and so this is an example of what happens on slab foundations when they, they have problems. Cracks, for example. Dave showed you one in this house. And believe it or not, whether you've seen foundation cracks or not, this isn't that bad. It may look like it to some of you on camera, but the truth of the matter is it's just um, the separation isn't that bad. But what has to happen is you have to address why it happened, right? And typically what happens is it's water and mismanagement of water. So what I'm going to talk about quickly is just some basic things to think about when you're looking at slab on grade foundations. First and foremost, you need to hire professionals. I'm not an engineer and I always enroll and hire a structural engineer to come look at the house and he just left actually because they're qualified to make certain assessments and look at things that if you're not an engineer you don't, you don't know how to do. <coughs> so the thing is, um, you got to look at, you got to get an engineer, you got to get a professional and then what you have to look at doing is addressing what caused the crack and like I said typically it's water so the things you have to do is get the water away from the house and this house doesn't have gutters and it doesn't look like it's had gutters for a long time so starting out you're gonna do gutters the other things that are really common are doing like a, um, a walkway around the house a concrete walkway and that's uh, to get moisture away from the house Got a lot going on right now um, and that actually will address that will start to address the water management of the, pro of the property so that because what happens when water sits against the house when you have certain kinds of soil, the soil settles and then the house settles and when it settles in certain spots you get uh, cracking and now what's happening is the house is starting to crown a little bit they call it when you can see the ends of the foundation sort of uh, bending over and again it doesn't necessarily mean you have a huge problem it could mean depending on the type of soil you have and if you're on a hill then you've got even more problems but this is a pretty level lot so is the neighborhood so let's talk about what has to the ways you can fix this type of foundation. Well, there's a lot of ways you can fix it, but what's very common is you have to remove about a foot on either side of the crack. So what they do is they, we're going to come back a foot on either side of this crack, and we're going to cut away from this crack, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to take rebar, and we're going to dowel into, drill into the existing foundation, and we're going to epoxy inject it in so that it sticks. So we're going to have rebar crossing this crack with a foot of separation, into new good, you know, the existing slab and then we're going to re-pour this concrete. And what that does is it ties the um, foundation back together and, and that's what we're going to do with this repair. You know, so that's, that's one way to fix the foundation. There are other ways that you can fix this. You can remove whole sections of the foundation which don't, don't need to be done here, but sometimes that, that's a fix for the, the crack depending on where it's at, okay? So that's important and when the, the cracks are even smaller than this, you don't have to, you can actually do what's called epoxy injection, which is taking a special kind of, it's not glue, it's way more powerful than that, but you actually just inject it into the crack and it, and it binds, it sticks the two pieces together. Now this is right on the borderline of the separation where you can do that, so we're not going to do that here. We're going to spend a little bit more money and we're actually going to do the, um, do the removal and we're going to do rebar and we're going to tie it all, all back in together. Okay, now when you <coughs> look at this kind of work, honestly it's, it's just concrete work. Now that's very simple, that's oversimplifying it because you have to have a professional with an engineer devise like a detail of what needs to be done, but at the end of the day it's cutting concrete, it's rebar and it's new concrete. Okay, so the repairs on something like this, depending on the length of the crack, don't need to be that expensive. This is actually a crack that runs from uh, almost to the front of the house to a little bit before the back of the house. So just on a quick estimate, it's probably 15 to 20 feet. And something like that for that work is gonna be, it's gonna be in the range of about eight to $12,000, okay? Um, that's uh, gonna be for the, for that, to repair that crack. Okay, now you can get charged a lot more and sometimes you can even spend a little bit less. But that's a pretty good range um, you can look at what well, that's going to be for this, uh, this repair. So the other thing that I mentioned you have to do is you have to address water management on the property. Um, 
And so what we're going to do outside is put gutters around the whole property because there aren't any gutters here. So what gutters will do is they'll take the water, you know, channel them to downspouts and get them away from the house because right now water comes and it just sits against the house. And there's a little bit of grade where the comes towards the house so that basically all the water on the property right now, even coming off the roof, is coming down and sitting around the house, which is not a good thing because then the soils can uh, settle and then the house can settle. So gutters. And then the other thing we're going to do is what, what we call, um, you know, moisture barrier is one term for it. It's really just a, like a three foot wide walkway typically around the property. And what that does when you slope it away from the house is when water comes against the house, it doesn't get into the gutters, it actually falls away from the house. So again, it's just one more level of protection. Now we've got a little concrete here, but there's like a, uh, there's a flower bed right here, which we're going to fill in so that again, water slopes away from the house. Okay. So that's a, I mean, that's really basic, some really basic foundation things that I wanted to talk through. There's certainly a lot more that goes into certain types of foundation repairs, but those are a couple of things to be, to be, uh, to look at for, to look for. And where you're going to see commonly, um, if there's a foundation problem is when there's like hard, uh, flooring, for example, when there's tile in the kitchen, it'll start to pop. Now when there's carpet, sometimes you won't know that. So you have to, depending on, uh, if you think there's a foundation problem, you're going to pull that carpet back and take a look. Okay, I'll do some follow-up videos once we start doing the repair here because there's a lot more that can, that can go into foundation repairs, but I want to give you some basics. So next segment, deal or no deal. Deal or no deal. Okay, so our deal or no deal, we're going to keep it pretty simple today. You know, using a professional or not using a professional for certain types of work that we do on our houses, for example, foundations. And absolutely 100% using professionals um, that we hire to give us uh, input. And foundations are one of those things that, you know, until you've dealt with them, you don't, you don't know. So you gotta hire people that know what they're doing and that starts usually with an engineer. Okay, and then finding a good contractor that's dealt with foundations and done repairs. And one way you can find those type of people are, you know, asking, right? Asking an engineer what contractors have they worked with in the past and vice versa. Asking a contractor what in, that has done foundation work, what engineers have they worked with. And there's a lot of different reports that an engineer can do depending on the, what he or she sees, um, phase one, phase two type of reports, or they can just provide a simple detail of what they recommend for the repair. Um, and then they, the contractor follows that detail and it gets stamped by the engineer and it can be used to go on to your plans. It can be used to provide to your buyer for, um, to show that you did the work properly. But absolutely using professionals and not just guessing because foundations and until you've dealt with them, even even after you've dealt with them like we have now, we still enlist an engineer because it's the right way to disclose it and, and, and it just allows a professional to come in to give you their opinion, which is definitely important when it comes to foundations. Our next segment is the quote of the week. Let's go there. Quote of the week. Okay, so in our quote of the week, we're going to go deep. Giving your son a skill is better than giving him a thousand pieces of gold. It's a Chinese proverb. What that means to me and what I want it to mean to you is that knowledge is power, right? We, I sometimes will ask people when I'm teaching, would they rather have a million dollars or would they ha rather have the knowledge of a Bill Gates or Warren Buffett or another highly uh, skilled into, you know, entrepreneur? And I'll take that knowledge from that person any day of the week and twice on Sundays because giving someone a million bucks, yeah, that's a lot of money for most people, but you, that money can go away, it can be spent. But knowledge, you know, knowledge is yours. Knowledge is yours. And that's what I try to do with these videos. And hopefully you're receiving some of that knowledge. I want to remind everyone to go to the YouTube channel and subscribe um, for FBTV. I also want to encourage you if you have questions about what I talked about here, because believe me, I didn't even scratch the surface when it comes to foundation repairs, is go, go below this video and comment. And I will respond to those comments the best that I can. We can get some more questions answered. So fair enough. Um, I encourage you to do that, suggest a show, and I'll see you next time.